Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at the graphic user interface of the Catalyst 9300 series Ethernet switch. Uh, typically we'd probably be doing something more CLI oriented, but I thought why not check out the GUI, see what it looks like, see what it has to offer. Um, if you've worked with Cisco user interfaces in the past, always been a little bit to be desired, so uh, I hear rumors that this one is uh, much better. I'll let you be the ultimate judge. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the uh, comments section. Um, with that being said, let's uh, let's dive into it. If you've not already done so, hit subscribe, by the way. Anyhow, here we go. Uh, so the web interface, you're going to come to a page that's looking uh, something like this. There will be your typical admin credentials. Key those in, and uh, the page seems to load fairly quickly. Uh, and from the outset, we see some key info. We see the switch is a Cisco 9300-24U, uh, so it's 24-port universal PoE. Uh, it's 16.6.5 .6 version of code. There is a uh, alert here. If I open that up, we can see what that alert is. Uh, it actually looks like I have more VLANs configured than what the switch will support with its current spanning tree config. So 128 VLANs supported with the per VLAN spanning tree config is essentially what it's telling me. So uh, please remedy that in essence. So uh, anyway, we'll move on from there. Uh, your your alerts, whatever they may be, will show up in that in that corner for quick access. Uh, the dashboard shows us a couple key stats: uh, CPU, memory. Um, if you have app visibility turned on, you can see the top applications that are through the switch. Um, See, uh, see a little bit of that here. We'll, we'll talk about that in some more depth in just a moment. Uh, and you see key system info, uh, host name, device uptime, system time, you know, boot image, that type of thing. Uh, and um, yeah, quick, uh, quick overview of the switch. You can hit switch view. This will show you what ports are active. Uh, you can kind of switch the, uh, the mode here, speed, duplex, PoE, that type of thing, um, similar to the button on the front panel of the switch. And uh, that's, uh, that's kind of the, the main things for the dashboard. Now let's move down to the monitoring tab, and uh, we'll just step through them. we got CDP. You can see uh, some CDP neighbors here. Um, you can see ports, so the actual configuration of each switch port. Uh, port 1 and 2 I have configured as trunks, and that's I'm passing a bunch of VLANs through. This is just kind of a, uh, just inserted it in the network between a layer 2 link between my lab switch and my firewall, is essentially what I did. Um, <clears throat> so you see some port config there. If we take a look at system, uh, this switch thinks it's still part of a stack, which it's not, but uh, I probably should have went and cleaned that up. Uh, thinks it's switch number 2. We can see memory utilization, CPU utilization, and redundancy info. So probably more applicable if it was in a stack. Uh, let's see, application visibility. Uh, I said we'd come back to this. You can kind of get a, a high level overview of what traffic is passing through the switch with this. So uh, you have two 24 and 48 hour intervals. Um, this does use NBAR to do the classification, so it mentions what version of NBAR there. Uh, and if you hover over the graph, you can see that there's a lot of Pinterest usage for whatever reason uh, right now. You can reference it down here as well, percentage, and then the actual amount of usage. 169 megs of usage. We can see there's a fair amount of YouTube, a fair amount of Netflix, some Cisco Spark, SSL, Facebook, and then a, a couple other, uh, couple other thin slices there. Uh, if you switch this view to be maybe 24 hours, uh, you'll get much more. You know, get that wider view. So uh, Amazon Instant Video. Uh, watched the video on Prime last night, so that's probably what most of that is. Uh, again, some Facebook, SSL, YouTube. And uh, Pinterest is a much smaller slice uh, of that now. So uh, anyway, this can actually be filtered down by interface as well. I'm just running it on uh, on interface one. But um, but yeah, cool. So all right, well let's move on from that. Monitoring that does it for monitoring. Let's look what's under configuration. So interface. Let's uh, pick the interface. Oops. 
logical interface. Okay, so this would be your VLAN, your SVI interfaces can be configured here. Uh, currently, the only one that is configured is the default VLAN 1. It's admin up, operational up, but it doesn't have an IP address assigned. Um, I'm actually managing this through the management port. Uh, loopback interfaces, no loopbacks configured. Advanced, uh, I don't know what advanced is. If I hit add, oh, okay, port channels. Right, so port channel interfaces, if we wanted to create one of those. Probably be nice if it actually said that before you had to actually open the config, but uh, it's all right. Uh, physical interfaces, so this will be our physical ports. Uh, you can see... 0 slash 0, which is the management port, has an IP address assigned, 10, 100, 201, uh, 2.45. Uh, if I come in here, you can see some different info, admin status is up, speed, 1,000. I can give it a description, change the duplex, etc. Uh, port settings, so here you can actually see what VRF it's part of. Um, Set port fast on or off, change how the IP address is configured, uh, actually assign the, the IP address itself. Uh, there's some IPv6 options, and uh, okay, so fairly, fairly helpful. Uh, and under advanced, uh, okay, cool, look at that. So we can configure some QoS, looks like, looks like if auto QoS is in use, we can pick a, a policy there. User defined QoS. Uh, interface templates, ACL information, channel group. Okay, so there's a, um, a fair amount of options here. Cool. So let's say, hit the X to exit out of that. Uh, if I want to look at STP, Spanning Tree Protocol, if you remember that error message was, was coming in there, it's because I'm using Rapid per VLAN Spanning Tree. Now the only way to get around to that is to use multiple Spanning Tree and put uh, a bunch of VLANs into one Spanning Tree. So uh, that option's not here. These are both per VLAN spanning tree options. So whatever that problem, whatever we're going to do to fix that problem, we're going to have to do from the CLI, the way it looks. But uh, yeah, okay, so you can see the list of uh, VLANs here. I have quite a few created for something else I was working on. But uh, all right. Uh, routing protocols. So it looks like the only option is static and EIGRP, which... Uh, Let's see here, so virtual instance, let's hit advanced. Okay, so we can give it a router ID, autonomous system number, in variance, redistribution. Oh look, we can redistribute into OSPF, but we can't configure OSPF. Very interesting. All right, it's all right. Uh, go back to config, do static routing. All right, so static routes, we can configure a static route here and configure as we need to. Uh, okay, so security. Triple A, uh, there's a triple A wizard. Okay, so this allows us to pick what triple A service we're using. Is it Radius, TACX, or LDAP? Uh, and we can kind of set some of that up. It looks like we have the option to step through. Oh, cool, port numbers. We can step through and uh, configure that and uh, follow the wizard. So I'm not going to bore you with that right now. You're welcome to try that out on your unit. Uh, we can see, you know, if there's already servers or server groups added, we can check out that information. So that's that's good to have. ACL. All right, so we have a list of ACLs. Let's um, let's take a look at one. Pre-auth v4. Uh, all right, I can. Uh, these probably must be defaults. So if I hit the ACE, okay, access this entry. We have the entries in the access list here. If we need to add one, we can do that. Don't have, well, I guess I have most of the options there, so that's it's kind of handy. And then you can hit apply. We won't we won't change anything there. You can step back and see see the rest of our ACL entries or our ACLs. Cool. Uh, FQDN. So domains list. Um, create, create a domain list. I'll be honest, I would have to look to see what the heck exactly this feature is for. So I'm not 100% sure offhand what this is. Um, it doesn't seem to be fairly, you know, it doesn't seem to be all that descriptive. So we'll move on. Maybe I'll have to come back around to that and uh, talk about that later. So 
services, application visibility. All right, so here's where you configure application visibility. You can see uh, there's interfaces, and then there are the interfaces that are added to the visibility uh, configuration. So if I wanted to add another interface, you can, you know, click click and add it to the uh, right hand side here and kind of go from there. You can also jump back to the monitoring of app visibility and control with the link in the upper right hand corner. Last but not least under configure we have VLAN and there is okay so it's very similar to like a show VLAN uh, type of uh, output you can see what what interfaces are assigned to what uh, you know to what VLAN so you can scroll through here again I have a number of VLANs created so we can we have to you know skip through those uh, a little bit but uh, you get the idea we have VLAN groups IP DHCP snooping so IP DHCP snooping you can actually turn on per VLAN and per um, you know uh, and then apply to interfaces so you can actually enable that here if you would like maybe I'll do a separate video on IP DHCP snooping good good feature to have on from a security perspective um, cool so that's uh, that's about it from a config perspective let's check out administration so commands alright so commands we have the ability to file download to file upload and to reload so reboot the switch, good functionality to uh, know where it is. There's some device information. Uh, you can actually configure a banner message here, get some very basic info about the system. So uh, chassis temperature and host name are about the main, uh, the main things you can change here. DHCP scopes, if you're running DHCP on the switch itself, you're able to add a scope here. Uh, there's basic and advanced settings for that. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind if you need to provision DHCP. Licensing. So this is a CAT 9300. It has network advantage as the permanent license. So the IP uh, feature set, IP services feature set, as well as DNA advantage, which is a subscription. So if we were using DNA Center, we have rights to that. Cool. Uh, management. So HTTP and HTTPS access is enabled. If we wanted to try and lock this down a little bit more, we could disable HTTP and just go with uh, the secure version. Um, there's a couple other uh, security features here, uh, trust point and so forth. SNMP. So if you wanted to use SNMP for monitoring, you can certainly do that and uh, you know provision that here. Some basic uh, basic info system location and system contact smart call home that's just the ability for the switch to phone home to Cisco if there are problems or things to report software upgrade so again another uh, option to copy a installation file across there's time so the actual clock on the system important to have this up and running and accurate for logging in particular. We have user administration. So if you wanted to add users to the switch for administrative purposes and you're not using TACAX or RADIUS or something to that effect, uh, you can actually do this here. Uh, you can see it also has privilege level and policy info. And uh, that's it for administration. Last but not least, troubleshooting. So uh, a couple different troubleshooting options here. Uh, web server log, packet capture, ping trace route, and so forth. So packet capture, you can actually provision a packet capture here, give it a name, apply a filter, um, you know, build it out and then apply and, uh, and go from there. So maybe I'll do a specific video on packet capturing if you guys tell me that you want to see that. But, uh, but know that that is available in the web GUI as well. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up with that. Uh, last but not least, when you're ready to exit out, the upper right hand corner has a log out button. Be sure to hit that so that you're logged out securely and away you go. So anyway, appreciate you watching. If you have other questions, comments, uh, I'd love to hear what you actually think of the web interface. 
Uh, it's definitely an improvement over things that we've seen in the past. Um, I'll let you guys be the judge. I have my opinion, uh, and maybe I'll weigh in if I get some uh, some commenters. But uh, but yeah, would love to know what you think. Uh, appreciate you watching as always, and we hope to see you again soon.